everybody. Welcome back to Maya Mondays. My name is Daryl Bear, and today we're going to be picking up where we left off last week um, with working with very large object counts in very high-res geometry um, that's been instanced across your scene lots and lots of times. Using uh, Last week we went through the process of setting up mental ray proxies so that you can have low-res geometry carry high-res geometry. So like in this example, we've got the high-res geometry uh, currently displayed. And if we go ahead and display the low-res geometry, it's just some bounding box objects that would then carry those mental ray proxies along for the ride. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building up um, our scene, again, using this low-res geometry, replicating it across our scene. But before we get there, we need to go ahead and build a little rig that's going to allow me to evaluate sort of where the light bounce is happening. So when the light comes down and hits the mirror, where is that reflected ray going to go um, and so that we can use that sort of little visualization rig to help us point all of our mirrors toward the tower and make sure that the light bouncing from the angle of the sun is going to reach that thermal tower that we talked about last week. So this is really pretty straightforward to do. If we just jump over to our right view, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple curves that we're going to build this rig out of. So if we jump into our curves menu, and I'm holding down my X key to grid snap, so we'll just kind of grid snap that guy in there. We'll jump back to my perspective. I want to get that curves pivot point at the uh, the bottom of that guy. So I can do that really quickly using the bonus tools, modify, zero pivot tools, and put that to the base of that. So that's pretty straightforward. So now we've got this curve, and I'm going to call it something like rig. So this rig, this curve, what we want to do is we want to have it sort of align to the, um, to the orientation of our sun. So we'll grab our sun, we'll grab our curve, and you know what, I'm going to just make this do a minus 90, kind of make sure that that guy's going right down from the top view, grab our curve, jump into our constraint, and just do this orientation constraint with an offset of minus 90. So we'll click apply on that guy. So now as we spin our sun around, obviously that curve, you know, it lines itself up. So what we need to do is we need to get the bounce of that or the mirror of that off of that mirror. So to do that, I'm going to take this curve and I'm just going to group it. And I'm going to take that group and have its pivot also be at the, um, the, the the base of that or the origin of that. So we can go ahead and just um, put that back to minus 90, grab this guy and re-execute that uh, bonus tool command by hitting the middle mouse button, which repeats the last tool that we just did. If you're on Windows, one of my uh, YouTube subscribers pointed out the fact that, or maybe it was on the area, someone pointed out the fact that that middle mouse button trick that I talked about last week only works on Windows. So if you're on uh, OS 10 or Linux, just be aware of that. So now we've got this object that's um, that's got this group above it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a duplicate of this curve actually at the group level. And I'm going to do a special type of duplicate that's going to be an instance. So it's going to inherit all the uh, properties of it, of you know, sort of this object that it's derived from. So if we say edit, duplicate, um, special, bring up the options for this. By default, the tool is set to just do a standard copy, right? I'm going to switch this over to create an instance. We'll do that duplicate special. And now what we can do is we can take group two and we can just flip it 180 degree, oops, 180 to get the mirror of it. So now if we grab our sun and we start moving that guy around. You can see that obviously we've got our original object that lines up with the sun parallel to it, right? And then we've got our grouped object that's going to be our mirrored rays or our bounce off of that mirror. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these guys and we're going to parent them into that, that top box. So we just hit the P key to do that. So now as I start to move that mirror box around, obviously the object that's got that constraint is going to always be lining up parallel to the sun. The, the child of it or the instance of it is going to be parented in there. So it's going to inherit those offsets or those tweaks that we made from its, from its parent, right? But it's, it's going to get the mirror of the reflection plus the offset of the mirror, I guess is the easiest way to think of it. So that, that actually ends up working out, you know, pretty awesome. So what happens um, if we duplicate this guy? So let's say we're going to go ahead and create a nice little, uh, nice little grouping of these guys and just, you know, replicate this across a bunch of times. So let's just do something like that and replicate that guy. Well, when we do the replication, obviously, those other objects aren't going along for the ride. They're not getting that, that instance along for the ride. So how do we fix that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to actually do this a little bit differently. We're going to get this guy's back to a, a zeroed out minus 90 position, and we're going to duplicate this. But before we do that duplicate, what I want to do is I want to create a quick selection set of this curve just called rig. So we'll say edit, create selection set. This is going to allow me an easy way to, uh, to pick those guys. So we can just call it underscore set C or whatever. So that's going to give me an easy way of picking my, uh, my curves once they've been duplicated. Because we're going to want to perform 
that constraint command on a whole list of objects. And we're going to be using a little bit of Mel to assist us in that because, as you know, Maya, a lot of the uh, operations in Maya are set up on an action kind of workflow. Perform, grab an object, perform an action on it. Well, what happens if you want to perform that action on a list? By default, the tools don't do that, but with a little bit of Mel, it's really easy to set that up. And this, this kind of workflow that I'm teaching you is um, you know, replicated across any, any tool. What I'm going to show you with this creating a list and then performing the action on a, on a list of objects, you can you could substitute the Mel command with any other Mel command and it would work. So what we've got here is we've got our objects. We duplicated that guy. Or we, we've got it set up to be duplicated, so we'll just duplicate it across here. And oops, actually, let's, before we do that, let's let's delete that that constraint. We don't want to have any constraints in there because we're going to build the constraints after we have a whole whole whack of these guys, right? So we'll duplicate that guy, and I'll just uh, shift D that guy across there, right? Boom, 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 just like that. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to select all those curves and perform this this um this mel command on it, right? So if I go ahead and I say or I'll show you not work first. So if we say edit, um, you know, the command was to grab the light originally, and then you grab the the, lit, the objects that you wanna you wanna get. So we've got this select set in here, right? So if we do quick select set C, it goes through and it grabs all those all those curves, right? Pretty straightforward. So if you look at the mel command for that guy, if we just run that guy, you can see it's select minus R, which is basically means select minus replace. So that's not really what we want to do. We want to do a select add. So instead of um, R, we're just going to put add in there. And you can see there's all the flags for select. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this guy. And I'll just copy this just because I'm going to want to do it more than once. We'll do a select add to our selection. So now we've got you know, what you think might be the right thing to do the constraint, right? So if we go ahead and we do that animation constraint, and this is not going to work, right? Because by default, Maya isn't set up to work on, on, on lists. I just want to show you what it does, that it fails, right? So we do that orientation constraint, and you know, uh, it just totally bombs, doesn't, doesn't do at all what you want. Only did it on one object, and the offset's all wrong, and it's just, just, just not cool, right? So let's go ahead and undo that, and let me show you the workaround or the fix for this. So the workaround or the fix is, is actually pretty pretty awesome. So we're going to do that last thing where we select an object and then we add to our selection. Um, again, that, that little uh, mel command, select minus r, add, right? So we'll grab that guy. So now we've got our, our, our object selected in the, cor in the correct order. We selected our light first and then we selected all of our other objects. And instead of running that mel command um, to, to do the, the orientation constraint, what I'm going to do is... I think I've got it sitting here on a shelf, so I don't have to type it up. I do. Um, I'm going to run this guy. So what this is doing is this is really pretty straightforward. It's taking my selection. Um, it's creating it's creating a new variable dollar sign selected, and it's using the ls command, which is just a Maya command for list. So we're listing our dash sl means selected objects, and then we're flattening that list so that it, they each become an individual object. And then for each of those. Um, in that kind of array that we've built or that list that we've built, we're going to perform um, this orientation constraint. So it's basically just going to flip through this, right? Boom, 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 and run that orientation constraint for my selected objects, my list of selected objects. Now, you could substitute this orientation constraint out with any other mail command. Ex you know, um, doesn't matter what you, what you make it. And then I've thrown a couple of variables in here. So the, uh, the offset minus 90, and I set the value to 1. So basically, this stuff you don't need, right? You could you could blow that away and just use the option, the default options for the orientation constraint. And if you wanted to make this work with a different mel command or a different set of tools, you wouldn't put the orientation constraint mel command in there or call in there. You'd put whatever it is you want. So essentially, this this stuff you could replace with whatever you want. So then it's going to run that command on on each object. So really, super simple, very straightforward. So we'll just hit boom, 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 just like that. It goes through. If you look at each of these guys, it made this orientation constraint rig one. You jump down to this guy. It made another orientation constraint. So it just made all those orientation constraints for me on my selected objects. So now, what do I have? Well, I have a whole whack of objects that, that have that, that little rig in there. So I'll post that mail command in my blog. It's a really simple, um, it's really simple. Hopefully, I explained the syntax of the way it works for you enough. Essentially, again, what we're doing is querying the objects that we have listed and then just running a little simple command, you know, running, running through the list of objects and performing the tool, essentially. It's, it's really simple, and 
this is really the key to Maya, right? This is what makes Maya so, so awesome is its ability to do stuff like that. So now what we've got is we've got our objects, you know, hanging out, looking cool. I'm happy with them. The problem is I want to be able to rotate, you know, maybe this mirror or maybe the, the base of this object and have all of my children objects sort of go along, um, you know, all the objects that are neighboring it also get a little bit of rotation. Because the idea is, you know, once I replicate these objects around my field, I don't want to have to move each individual object or rotate individual object to get those, those um, you know, that rig to line up and focus those beams. I want to be able to grab one and have all of its neighbors sort of assume some of that with a little bit of fall off on it. So Maya's got some really cool translation tools inside of it that gives us the ability to do soft select. And you can actually do soft select on objects. The problem is it works kind of, it feels like it works on the shape node level. So it doesn't work on like group three, group four, these transforms that soft select won't hit those transforms. It's going to hit the actual piece of geometry under it, right? So you need to be kind of smart in the way you um, parent things together. And you also need to be aware of it's going to tweak or modify everything that's visible on your screen. If it's pickable, it's going to grab it and touch it. So what does that mean? Well, let me, let me put that into, uh, into context for you a little bit more clearly. If we jump into our, our, um, you know, our rotate tool here, you can see that we've now got a lot of options that have been um, kind of consolidated. So the next toolkit had some really cool stuff inside of it. It had lots of ways of working with, um, you know, different different orientation axes and different ways of moving the object. Center was newly added into 2015. Um, so play around with these and look into them because they're actually pretty cool. And, and we're going to play with the re rotate pivot in just a second. But one of the things that was kind of added into the tool set that used to be only in the next tools was the component. And I, you know, it's all these little tweaks that really go into making you know, 2015, just, just awesome, right? So if you grab this object and you go into your rotate tool and you start grabbing faces and you go to component mode or the move tool, you know, it basically just puts it to, uh, to work at the component level. So it's just, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I'm so happy that all this stuff sort of got consolidated. Anyway, I kind of got sidetracked there. Let's just go back and reset that tool off a of component. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this object and we want to uh, we want to rotate it, you know, whatever, and we want its children mirrors to also get a little bit of rotation, sort of down the, down the line, down my string here, right? So um, it looks like I undid my uh, my constraints there when I did that. That's a pity. Oh no, they're still there. Cool. Okay, cool. So we want this guy to sort of replicate down uh, down that list, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jump into our rotate tool and turn on soft select. And you can see that I've got it set to object. So what that means is cool. Every object that's selectable in my scene now, including my light is getting that rotate tool. That is not what we want to have happen. So the kind of trick to get around that or the hack to get around that is to either hide the stuff, which in some cases is okay, or put it on a layer and lock that layer so that it can't get moved either with the trans, um, the, um, a template or the reference command. So by putting sun into that, you know, now if I grab this guy and start to spin it, obviously the sun isn't going along for the ride. So what we want to do is we want to put, you know, all of our little rigs into that guy and our base object into that guy. The problem is if I grab these guys and I put these into, you know, into a reference layer, those base objects, you know, we're, we're basically locking everything out so that I can't really go in there and pick that stuff now. So the way I sort of built this up and parented this guy isn't really conducive to the type of work that I want to do with it. So essentially I showed you the, the broken way. Let's just delete everything and we're going to go back and build up a couple of layers that are, that are going to do what we want. We can delete this layer now. We don't need that guy in there. So instead of parenting this guy underneath a transform node, because again, that soft select isn't going to allow me to grab that, that base tower and have it move the whole rig. The soft select only works on, on, you know, kind of shape nodes or geometry transfer nodes with shape nodes associated with them. The way I group this guy isn't good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we'll blow away that constraint. We don't need that guy anymore. Um, actually, before we blow that away, it's a good idea to zero this guy out. Oops, I can't pick my son here. So let's, let's just zero this, this dude out one more time. Great. Oops, minus 90. Get that guy sort of where we want it here. We can delete that constraint now because we're going to rebuild all that stuff after we redo our grouping here and, and add a couple of layers. So I guess the idea is you really kind of know where you're, where you're going before you, you need to be smart about your, your parenting of your objects as well as the layers that you make. So we want that, that we want to be able to grab this base and move that base and have all the other objects go along for the ride above it. So we'll just parent that guy, uh, grab that guy and that guy and hit power 
parent. So now we've got our object here, which is going to be our, you know, our full rig, and we've got our mirror, which is going to be our, you know, our second little guy. So now we can go still in here and start making our, our layers that are going to do what we want. So obviously the sun, um, we don't, well, we'll let it, we'll let it say the way it is. We're going to grab our box, which is our top mirror box, right? And we're going to add that to a layer. So we'll just say top M, because in some situations we're going to want to spin that guy. In other situations, we're going to want to be able to lock that guy out. We're going to want to grab our little, our little sun rig and add that to a, to a thing, um, to a layer called, you know, rig or whatever. That is never going to get moved, right? We never want our soft select tool mucking up our rig or moving our rig. So we're just going to reference that guy out right away. And then we want to also sometimes be able to move that top mirror, but not this bottom box. So we're going to grab that bottom box and we're going to add a layer for that. And we'll just call it, you know, base or something, you know, whatever that works. So now we've got our, our layer set up, right? That we can lock the position or the objects we want to lock so that they don't get affected by that soft modification tool. And let's just redo a, a quick duplication of that guy. So we can just say, Duplicate on you, kind of, oops, let's turn off that soft select. You can see the, the, the havoc that that soft select re does. Oops, undo that guy. Let's just, ah, uh, oh, come on. Didn't, didn't get what I wanted it to do here. Let's just do Control-D and then slide it and then hit the Shift-D a few times. All right, cool, so we're good there. Let's just go back and execute our little our little rig builder you know let's just paste this guy in here so everything is selected the correct way using that select minus add and we'll just run my little uh you know my little mail command on that guy so we've got our we've got our rig set up here so now that if we grab our sun you know and we jump into our rotate tool you know everything is sort of back where we wanted and we have the hierarchy set up the way we need it to be so what that means is if i want to spin this guy and not have everything else go along for the ride well, rig thing is locked out. That's that's great. And we want to make sure that the base is also locked out so that it doesn't move. So now if I hit my B key to get that soft select turned on, you can see that I can position those mirrors. Oops, our sun's going long for the ride. We want to lock that sun off. You can see that I can position those mirrors now and have that nice sort of fall off happening. And, you know, it's it's all it's all pretty cool. And obviously, you get a sense of, based on that sun angle, where are those reflections going to go, right? So obviously... Um, you know, it's not, it's not giving me, they're not all, oops, let's turn that soft select off. Hit that B key to turn that soft select off. You know, you really get a sense of, based on the angle of the mirror, which way is the light going to bounce? So that's all, you know, that's all pretty sweet. So the next thing that we want to do is, all right, let's say we wanted to rotate each one of these mirrors around its base a little bit, you know, as they've been replicated around this outside circle. So to do that, we need to go in here and we need to, um, sort of play around with this. So instead of um, having the base, the top mirror box be free to move, we want to lock that guy off and we want to be able to move the base thing. So we'll turn that off. So now if we go into our tool here and we rotate that, obviously that spins the way you'd expect, right? It bounces that, that light ray the way you'd expect. Hit the B key to get that soft select turned on and we start to spin this and what happens? Well, each one of those objects is actually getting transformed and that's because it's spinning around this pivot point, right? Which is not really what we want to have happen. It's spinning around the default rotate pivot is essentially our, our manipulator, right? So if we just switch that to object and now we spin it just like that, each tower spins appropriately and you can see the light rays, you know, going and, and focusing themselves in onto the, uh, to the right point. So it's all, um, you know, pretty straightforward and I think it works out pretty well. So the final step for this would be to take these objects, you know, something like this guy, and, um, you know, replicate it around all the old existing objects using the replace objects command. Um, actually, you would, you would do that, and then after you get your objects fully replaced, you'd go back through and, and run that command to, um, you know, make your little rig with that dollar sign select um, command. So essentially, that's it. I hope it makes sense to you guys. I sort of, um, you know, only worked on a few objects to try to, try to keep it, um, concise and clear on what, what I was doing. So the key, the key takeaways, again, are um, you need to group things correctly because that soft select is going to sort of work at the geometry level, and you need to use your layers um, with the ability to lock off the ability for that soft select to access those, those objects to make sure that it's not accidentally introducing tweaks or rotations into them. 
And the other key takeaway is if you want to have objects or if you want to have a mel command, work on a list of objects or a selected group of, you know, a whole selection of objects. All you have to do is generate a little bit of mel code that, you know, creates your own custom variable that records a list of your selection. And then for each object in that selection, execute the command that you add. So again, it's, it's um, hopefully it's straightforward. I think it's pretty, pretty clear. Um, anyway, thanks for taking the time to check out Maya Mondays. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, if you want to keep getting the updates, hit the subscribe button. Cheers, everybody.